how long would you last in the zombie apocalypse? If it happened while you were at work. At work? That gives us all the same spot to begin. Oh, we I'm joining the zombies. We're. F- <laughs> I got about seven days. Yeah. Tops. Yeah. Because if I don't have insulin, I'm dead. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh okay. That's well, unfortunate. that's unfortunate. That's fair. Hello, my name is Shyler Mao. Welcome to the Knicks Boots from Start to Finish podcast. I'm joined here today by my colleague, Lucas Grassberger. Hello. Jamin Lau. Hello. Mikey Hunter III. <laughs> from a long line of hunters. <laughs> yes, indeed. Peace. And of course, our producer extraordinaire, Kelsey, Kelsey Lersbeck, k back, K-Train, just got a lot of, Bring a lot the of cool. Pain yeah. With the cake right? That's right. I answered all those. Well, thanks for joining me today, guys. Uh, we're going to talk about boot making and how you guys got into it. Um, kind of the, the handmade craftsmanship uh, part of what you guys do. We will be emphasizing a lot uh, this coming month about our trades program. Uh, where we support people trying to get into the trades with some discounts and, and kind of appropriate boots for different functions like electrical work or mm-hmm. or plumbing. And we thought, what better way to kick that off than by talking about our own very skilled tradespeople um, that we have in the boot factory. So we'll start with um, a couple questions for you guys. You know, I don't know, do you, do you think of yourself as tradesmen or, or you know, craftsmen? Um, I, I certainly do. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. me too. Yep. Okay. And I don't know, what is that? Uh, is that something you sought out to be? Um, something that kind of came about with the opportunity? What, you know, just maybe describe, uh, Jamin, why don't you talk about your, your, your process there? Well, it's kind of a long story. I've already talked about it on my episode, but basically I was going to school, going to university. I was studying to be a civil engineer and COVID hit, we got stuck inside and I was looking for a new hobby. So I'd already been into boots as a hobby and I thought, hey, I'll try making some wallets and working with leather. And I realized, hey, this might be something I want to do. I ended up contacting Shyler and you gave me the very smart advice of, hey, kid, you have two years left in school. Finish that first. So I finished that and I decided I still wanted to be stupid and throw away my degree. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. But I still wanted to do it. So I ended up still moving out here to Spokane and... Here I am. Okay. I yeah. told I told them we were crazy. Yeah. To hire here, it's <laughs> not gonna work. It's kid. kid no, be I mean, an you know, engineer man. But it, it is funny. Like the people who reach out to us are often some of the best hires we make, right? Because obviously they show the intent. They're interested Absolutely. in what we do, and um, um, I'm very happy that it's worked out as well as I'm it has. I'm happy too. Yeah. I'm stoked to have Jamin on our crew. He's definitely an asset. And a and a an important one. So. Absolutely, absolutely, Mikey. Uh, you have a perspective on that. Um, I did not ever. I never even knew what a handmade shoe was. I grew up in Southern California, surfing. I didn't wear shoes most of the time, <laughs> you know, when I was a kid. So uh, Vans. I wore Vans. Sure. Vans and barefoot. Yeah. So uh, I kind of just stumbled into this trade. I needed. I, my wife and I moved up in back in the 1900s, uh, <laughs> back in 1988 on horseback. He, well, we were had a covered wagon, but, uh, uh, yeah, living large. Yeah. You know, I mean, we had a vision and no, we came up and I just needed a job. And my brother-in-law knew a guy that worked for, for whites and they were looking for people and so uh, I came in. I went. I went to Whites and. Uh, Who's they, that? Yeah, there's some. <laughs> they're an obscure um, <laughs> shoemaking clan. Yeah, through the course of time, I I actually began to really like making shoes, and um, I got out of it for a little bit, and then I re- I was actually had my own business at the time, mm. and I went. I walked into Nick's and one of the former owner's brothers was on the sales floor and I'd been in there several times before and he said uh, his brother was going to be in pretty quick and if I was looking for a job and I told him no, 
and I took the job anyway. Cool. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, the people who build things and maintain things and, um, you know, construct like the material parts of our lives are really what make it possible to live the way we do. Um, I've, I've always, you know, been interested in the difference between, you know, the handmade process and maybe more automated things um, where like, I think for boot making, it's, I don't know how unique it is. Like I'm trying to think of other manufacturing, but it enables us to work with higher quality and, and different materials that I think would not really be suitable for um, a lot of the the more automated processes that are out there. Um, we talk to, um, we do have machines, obviously, you know, we're, we're got sewing machines and sole presses and that sort of thing. But, you know, we do often, we do incorporate a lot of the handmade process in there. And I was, I talked to our, you know, machine salespeople and they're always kind of blown away coming to our place, coming from like Red Wing or, you know, sure. they're all good. And, and then it's a great boot, but you know, it's, it's hitting a price point and it's, um, it's got constraints. Whereas I don't think we're quite as constrained that way. Um, I, have either of you, I mean, I know you haven't, Jamin, but um, have you worked in a shoe factory besides a kind of P&W nope. um, space? Never did. Okay. I had I had no idea what any of this looked like until I walked into a handmade boot shop. Yeah. And it was, honestly, I felt like I was stepping back in time. Yeah. You know. Um, sure. It, it, you know, it's kind of a, kind of a primitive trade you know there's not that many left Mm -hmm. how many of us left yeah i mean shoemaking in general is surprisingly still i don't know it's you know it's not like making semiconductors or anything like that like even even like overseas because you know labor is inexpensive there there is some some handmade process to it um like but you know like making sneakers so you're using this trouble machine and that Mm -hmm. sort of thing um but uh i don't know i've heard some machine salespeople say that like shoemaking was actually more automated like 60 70 years ago when it was still being done in industrialized you know right. high labor right. places than, yeah. than it is now. i mean honestly you know going back to when i was a kid vans van the the van doren shoe company started in my hometown of anaheim california and the, the factory was there and we did buy shoes at the factory and you could see into it like you know, there was windows and you could see sure. back into the factory, but it just wasn't something that we were interested in. It, mm-hmm. it was just, you know, it, it's it, where the boots came from. It's it, where the shoes came yeah, from. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. They, they just put the materials back there and then they just, it just boop, 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 pops yep. out of shoes, you know, yep. it's probably not the case. Well, I mean, that was when <laughs> manufacturing was still relatively prevalent in the U S sure. so yeah, it wasn't, you know, that unusual. Yeah. I mean, so talk about what you guys do. Um, some of the maybe attention to detail. I don't know how you think about it. Like, you know, what what actually goes into each day in terms of, you know, Jamin, I'll start with you yeah. and, and so boot making. A part of it, a lot of it is, sure, you can do what needs to make the final product, but there's a significant, significant part of my job, which is also making sure that the rest of production goes as smoothly as possible. And especially for Mikey, having to stitch the soles on, there's a lot that goes into making sure there's no air gaps, making sure the soles are pressed on all the way, they're trimmed to size, at least relatively close, and so on and so forth. And so there's just a lot of detail they have to pay attention to that kind of gets lost as after the boot gets finished. Sure. And so it's not as simple as, you know, even if you watch our videos, it's not as simple as it seems. I think that's a good point. And like you mentioned the air gaps, like, you know, Mikey, you, you kind of brought this up as we were prototyping the the new Brandle boot mm-hmm. um, that maybe we should leave the last in, you know, for for a longer period of time to kind of help everything sit and, and eliminate those air gaps, mm-hmm. um, which is something like no consumer is going to really. It's not apparent, right? right? Yeah. You a have to either ex- explain it or B just hope that the kind of the sum of the parts is yeah. you know superior enough that it you know kind of gets sort of appreciated yeah you tell a customer oh yeah one of the special things we do is we leave it on the last for a few more days and they're like what does that even mean yeah, yeah exactly yeah yeah what's the last now, i run yeah. into that all the time talking to people it's like okay i start talking about all these kinds of details and i it becomes apparent there <laughs> mm-hmm. what seems see obvious yeah exactly yeah. what seems obvious to us back here yeah isn't so much to much of the this. nomenclature mm-hmm. we use is foreign to anyone else mm-hmm. and even it varies from boot 
company to boot company yeah, too. I, I, region I, that's to region. that's yeah. a fact. I've even noticed there's some terms used in the PNW mm-hmm. space that are different outside of our space. Like, sure. like talking about sh- shanks. Like yes. we talk about our arch piece, we call it a shank. Yes. Other places, a shank is the structural piece. To and sometimes right. there's differences between yeah. just yeah. the companies yeah. in our space. Too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think part of that is because I mean we're a pretty young boot company in the broad scheme of relatively things, relatively speaking, and there's sure. still like some of it is still like knowledge that has been passed down from like you know the person who taught you and you yes. passed it down to Jamin and others yes. mm-hmm. who've taught you know kind of that apprenticeship. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Jamin <clears throat> mentioned you know watching a video, we make it look easy. Yeah. We really you know you watch a video on YouTube or Instagram. Facebook, we we have very skilled crafts people back there that really do make this look pretty easy. Where mm-hmm. the fact of the matter is, it's not. You know, mm-hmm. it takes. It can take, depending on what skill we're trying to teach, it can take a, a really long time. Lasting, for example, when you see Andrew is lasting a boot. Mm-hmm. You know, it looks like, oh man, a five year old kid could walk in there and do that. Well, come on down. Yeah. We yeah. love to show I'm you. experiencing that right now yeah. as I'm learning last thing because I thought I was making progress and then <laughs> Andrew was like, Okay, you gotta we gotta redo this this whole thing. And it's like, cra- oh, come it's on. It's crazy like, how proficient he is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. been doing it for ten, all over of, ten years. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. the shoemakers back there, the yeah. guys who are hand lasting those boots, man. It's uh they make it look easy. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. not. It's, it's, it's really. Ca- it's very complicated. Mm-hmm. Pulling the, the, you know, I mean, that's that's their side. Uh, and I've done. I've 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 kind of cruised through most of the skills back there, and I'm much more proficient at at some than others. And you ask, you know, like in my case, I run the sole stitcher, and that's pretty much takes up the majority of my day. I'm trying to feed the guys putting heels on so we can feed the guys that are sanding and shaping so they can feed the guys that are uh, finishing and polishing so they can feed the guys that are boxing and shipping. And that's kind of, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm what I'm looking for is that, that toe mm-hmm. gap, the air between the vamp leather that comes down over the toe and the the space between that and the the shoe last and the midsole that can cause me a lot of grief mm-hmm. if i don't catch that a lot of things can happen well that's uh, a, that's a good that's a good point mike yeah. um jamie is there are there any like specific things that you really kind of try to key in on as you're doing the boot making process um making sure like so the air in the toe is the one thing and then also making sure the skives where the welt starts is nice, a smooth transition. It's not like a sharp ramp because otherwise the, the stitcher can run underneath it. Yep. Making sure everything's glued down, sealed. It's just, there's a lot of attention to detail. And like every single tiny little thing. And when you're making that skive too, if you make it out a little too far, then you're going to have a big air gap that the stitcher wants to run into. Yep. If you have it, if it's not cut out far enough, then your uh, welt's kind of sucked underneath the boot and then that causes more problems. And so it's just every step you make and that's the one of the hard parts about bottoming was there's a dozen plus steps and you have to do every single one, n- not perfectly, but you have to pay attention to every single one. No, it needs and to you be gotta, perfect. Okay. <laughs> In which case, I'm out of a job. <laughs> but it's just every single step, you have to pay attention the whole time. Yeah. And even after a year of bottoming now, I can, I won't, I won't say I can just like close my eyes and do it, but... It's a lot more. It's a lot easier now, but still, I have to pay like acute attention to every single yeah. thing I'm doing. Yeah, the fact is, on on those, I am. I I do hope like most of the time I'm relying on the bottoming shoemaking department to to make those things happen, mm-hmm. so I can just focus mainly on getting stitches. Mm-hmm. You know, my my job is is uh, it is structural. There's a very um, important instruction. Uh, structural integral part of stitching but it's also cosmetic so he you know jamin mentioned the skive where the vamp meets Mm -hmm. the midsole if that's not a if that's not a smooth transition it it can be ugly yeah and i i don't like to put out ugly boots yeah you know so it's important switching gears a little bit here so we've 
this this year has been um there's been a lot of made of of like ai and sort of like some of these things happening um in the in the tech space um i you know i don't know think what do you have any any perspectives on like the trade professions not necessarily with ai but but in the digital age right like has anything really changed um uh for you it's probably a better question for you mikey as you've been around for a bit oh yeah Um, um, i mean how, how have you seen some of those things change if at all yeah uh it's it's really different now even you know from when i started in in the late 80s early 90s we do things a lot different um we're way way more um committed to speeding up the process if you will because as we become more inundated with orders and wait times become longer we want to try to expedite how we do the some of this stuff but you know at the at, in the same but you can't sacrifice the quality exactly right? in the same yeah. breath we're we're still trying to keep we're ch- still trying to maintain that real high quality handmade mm-hmm construction so it's a challenge it's a challenge to figure out what what we can do to speed it up yet can you know maintain the the the, the quality that the customer expects yep so yeah i th- i think um i can think of a couple of things like the i think our ability to collect manage and translate data mm-hmm. has really improved right Absolutely. like we have ipads yeah. back there oh and we're kind gosh. of i mean keeping track of you know, things when I, right. I mean you even know. just what in the last three years yes. when i started it was someone sat down and typed out every order oh. line by line yep. printed it out on like a, a ups <laughs> ticket <laughs> and sticker stick and a, stuck it to a poster i yeah. mean we mm-hmm. used to write every single yeah. one of these orders with a pen yeah yeah mm-hmm. so that's one okay. thing i've i've thought about a lot that's huge on this side of the building and lucas's like, qr codes yeah yeah my, I, I love qr codes everyone knows i love qr codes uh, <laughs> it's something i've thought a lot about a lot of like <clears throat> if we want to maintain this level of craftsmanship everything around the craftsmanship has to be brought up to the modern yep. age how long until we get an we... ipad on every single boot oh i've been preaching that idea <laughs> yeah. i mean you know it's... my my dream is like a upc code yeah, yeah. and we just my dream is a... every single one of you has like a touch screen in front of you where it just brings up the order tells yeah. you what you need to do i mean i see that i could see that happening mm-hmm. yeah. with yeah. you know i'm i'm getting getting older but i can see that happening yeah. before i retire mm-hmm. mikey just got uh, slack on his phone today wow yes it's a big moment finally yeah yeah round of applause now, now all i have to do is figure out how to use it <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but yeah qr codes <laughs> you know scanning the order yes. knowing exactly what you need and yeah. moving from mm-hmm. there i think that that's a major part of it. I I think um, it's worth noting the bit. The, I think the biggest change that's happened is with the advent of the internet, with yeah. being able to go direct to consumer from oh, an e-commerce yeah. standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. Because you know it's kind of interesting. Like you, we we look at a lot of old boot manufacturers for kind of inspiration or like looking at new models, and you know a lot of them are out of business. And there's kind of this like extinction event that happened in like the late 90s um you look at some of even some local guys around here like pnw's company called curran that we were looking at um or paris boots and that sort of thing but like they couldn't hang on long enough for e-commerce to become a thing and so they got mm-hmm. undercut by like over, you know outsourced labor sure um but weren't yet able to take advantage of like the margin improvements mm-hmm. that you see by able by being able to sell direct to consumers and so it's it's kind of interesting and so i think we've seen like a major resurgence of smaller you know manufacturing in in the u.s because you can like essentially replace what you know used to be a decent margin at wholesale and now you can get a decent margin at, mm-hmm. at retail yeah um, and like when i was starting to make wallets i was like okay i can just make an etsy page i can just throw these on there and start selling them it's like Back in the day, where would I go? Go to like a farmer's market. Yeah. Start driving it out. Yeah, you manually. would. It's like yeah. that's the only way to do you it would. back in the day. Yeah. And so, yeah. Well, even when I started for the one of the previous owners of of Nick's Boots, uh, the majority of our business was wholesale. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was wa- somebody walking through the door. Well, that was true as recently as not a majority, but it was pretty close as soon as recently as like 2019. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. like. It was way out of balance, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, whether it was out of balance, but you know, it was. We made so many boots for actually another company, 
mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah. And so that's for a Drews, huge change. For Drews. We yeah, used for to make Drews, boots. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a ton of them, a ton yeah. of boots for Drews. And so that's a cool change, yeah. I think, yeah. in the modern age where, like you said, you know, we we are, you know, we're directly selling to people now. I see tickets come through for, you know, Singapore and, mm-hmm. you know, all over the earth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Everywhere. That's crazy. When it's, I was yeah. starting really awesome. out, I used to keep a little, like, document in my phone. And I would add every single foreign country that was in there. Oh, really? Oh, really? And That's eventually awesome. got to the point where I was like, oh, I'm too tired of adding them. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I've gotten, like, I've yeah. collected, like, we all just had one come yeah. through that I saw was, like, I can't, I can't remember if it was Kyrgyzstan or... Really? Oh, wow. Somewhere yeah. way oh, wow. out there. Well, you, okay. you know, really like, cool. Like, far east, man. Even... Even cooler in my mind is um, Kelsey, other Kelsey in the store. She's got a world map out there now yeah. with pins. Oh, yeah. mm. And people who are coming to the store are pinning where they're from. And we've got like Australia, we've got China, like all <laughs> yeah. over the country. Awesome. People are coming to Spokane just to get a pair of our boots. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool, insane. man. Yeah, that's wild. But, I, like, I, mean, I like that idea. Yeah, and in terms of like the direct to consumer, I mean, big part of that. I mean, I know it's a big priority for you and, and for Steve was, you know, we're getting higher margins, which means we can pay our boot makers yeah. and everyone else like a decent wage, a living wage for a skilled trade. Yep. Yep. That's, that's the Hooray. goal. That's the goal. <laughs> um, yeah. What about, um, I don't know, what, what have you, have you seen any changes in the P&W space or Nix um, over the past, I don't know, recent, you know, recent history? I, yeah. You know, I mean, honestly, when I first started in this trade, every boot had a big fat heel on it. <laughs> and now we do a whole lot of boots that have a wedge sole. Yep. That's something we never did before, really. I mean, it was very, very few and far between. Uh, you know, that's the classic Pacific Northwest boot. Has a raised heel and a high mm-hmm. arch and, you know, a big lug sole. That's even, you know, I, I just recently got a new pair and it has a wedge sole on it and my wife actually said that's not a nyx boot you know because <laughs> and i was like what do you mean she says well it doesn't have a vibram sole on it you know and i'm i i said well welcome to mm-hmm. 2023 mm-hmm. Yeah. you know it's a new we've it's, always had the traveler you should, yeah. well not always but for a it's while just, well yeah. yeah but i'm talking about yeah, I know, you, I know. you asked I know, me i know i know it's <laughs> funny because i've been the... around a I long know, while. Yeah. I know. It's funny because I got the same <laughs> reaction. I got a pair of our, our Ridgeline wool, well, actually the Turnbull, and like everyone I know is like, "What are you wearing? That is not. Those, that's not. <laughs> those you. are cool. Those are cool. Boots. I know they're great boots. They but everyone's cool. so used to me wearing like yes. a chunky sure. logger heel, logger heel on it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or you know what? Packer heel or yeah. whatever. It's know? cool because like I just hear you guys talking about these boots that you have, and then like I remember making both of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jamin, you're you know you've been passionate about boots for a couple you know obviously mm-hmm. a couple years a couple now years i'm now, curious yeah. what your perspective is and maybe not necessarily even on nicks but in the broader space that you've seen over the last uh, little bit yeah when i was first getting into it the all the rage was aldens mm. people were really loving mm. the alden indies that sort of sleek yep. 270 degree good year welted low block heel but i think it was recently i have no idea what he's talking about <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty recently actually like i think around 2019 2020 ish i saw a big boom of people getting nicks getting a lot of whites the pnw yep. boots like getting out there and people started embracing the super chunky aesthetic the yep. chunky work boot they want the lugs they want the toe caps they want that 67 last the sprung toe and that was just like a big shift like because when i was getting to it, i was like man I, my ultimate boot was the like the Viberg service boot, the super sure. slim, yep. low aesthetic, like super refined. And then now I'm like, I wear them occasionally, but now that I'm at work, it's like, I need that. I need that 55 <laughs> last. I need that arc support. So Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely been beneficial. We've seen, I think that's a general style trend that we've mm-hmm. seen. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, and then the pandemic and like people wanted to get outside and yeah. Yeah. Um, formal became less, you know, prevalent. Exactly, yeah. And people um, stopped, like, I think a big of it, Big part of it was people were working from home now, didn't have as much need for their super nice dress shoes, and so people started getting into those work boots. And hey, that's great for us. Mike, are there any skills or traits that you think are uniquely necessary to be a good bootmaker or a good craftsman? Um, I think it's important when someone comes through the door. You know, the shoemaking trade isn't for everybody. That's a fact. Uh, I think you need to have a bit of a crafty, you know, 
I think a lot of uh, I think a lot of seals can translate into boot making. As far as like something unique, I think it's really important if you want to be a shoemaker that we would like to teach you how to make shoes. So if if you if you're like Jamin, you're really passionate. You come in, we can really yeah. we can put him in fast, man, because he has mm -hmm. a drive and he wants to do it well. And that's, that's, you know, that's important on some of these skills, yeah. some skills, not so much necessarily, you know, um, you want a job. We want to have those guys too, mm -hmm. because we need people to do other things that aren't necessarily like the craftsman style part of the, of the work that, that happens in, in the shop. But I, I do think that, um, it, it's important as far as becoming a craftsman, it isn't going to happen fast. You know, Jamin's been here, you been, how long? Two years? Year and a year half, and half now? Yeah, year and a half. I would say he's an exceptional example. And we have some other guys and gals that are exceptionally, exceptional examples of, of coming in with absolutely zero idea of how this stuff happens. And we've, we get them in here. And they're just talented. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you mm -hmm. have a kind of a kind of a gift yep. or a talent, you know. And I, uh, I, I was a builder before I started doing this. Um, but you know, uh, I actually told Jamin when he, probably three or four days after he started here, I said, "Man, you offend me." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "What? Why?" I said, "Because you you have." You have a degree in engineering and you come back here to the lowly shoe makers <laughs> department and you're just going to do this. You're crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully but, we can change that person. Right? <laughs> you know? Well, um, I was just being sarcastic yeah. for the most part, I, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Well, you got to you know. wear shoes, man. You know? yeah. Well, that's that's a fact. I'm, I'm curious, like most trades, there's like an apprenticeship, you know, apprentice journeyman kind of thing. Back there, like when someone new comes on, like mm -hmm. Jamin comes on, is it like kind of like an apprenticeship? Like, are you his his mentor or his, his journeyman in a sense? Um, yeah, I mean, there's there, you know, if like I said, some of the some of the stuff that happens back there, pretty much anybody can do it if they desire right. to to do the work. You know, yeah. some of it's not as glamorous as mm -hmm. as the other parts of the business. Right. You know, but you know, if you're gonna be a bootmaker. You're going to have to listen sure, and learn absolutely. from somebody who yeah. knows what they're talking about. Absolutely. You know, if you're going to run that soul stitcher, you're going to have to, you're going to have to listen. Yeah. You know, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to mess stuff up. Mm -hmm. Stuff's going to have to be redone. Stuff's going to have yeah. to be retorn down and, and rebuilt. Yeah. It's just the way it goes. Absolutely. There was a lot of so, times where I was just, I was, dis I would go home at the end of the day, kind of like discouraged. <laughs> it it like, can be discouraged. Like, oh, I was like, man, it's, yeah. it's just not clicking. It's not going well blah 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 and that's happened pretty recently with last thing but you just got to come back in it was like okay you know try it again yeah. you know? he's got to just keep going through it and then there's no there's no will... like it you can't it's not a math equation sure. you know yeah. where this sure. is the right answer mm -hmm. sometimes i mean from boot to boot yeah the different leathers even from sole, left boot you know, to right boot it's, yeah it's it can be different and that's the most challenging part yeah yeah, yeah. curious just because i've you know i think shoemaking in the traditional sense like people think of like got your apprenticeship you've got the the master maestro um mm -hmm. like i dipped my toes in shoe repair i was an apprentice for a little yep. bit and it was just one-on-one -on -one and it, it was, was just... probably more like that mm -hmm. when, when i we're... first started yeah. in the trade where right. you know there was a guy that used i mean we still do that yeah you know you're still going to be with someone who knows what they're doing to teach you how to do it right right mm -hmm. but we kind of almost have to kind of kickstart you pretty fast sure, you yeah, know yeah, yeah. and hopefully yeah. i mean we're not gonna we've had we have several people that come in and we put them in the shoemaking department and it's just really not for them but mm -hmm. we'll figure out where else yeah where else can we sure. mm -hmm. can yep. we use you you know as long as they want to stay here yeah. so yeah. mikey what's a memorable experience from your time here from here yeah uh gosh memorable experiences uh Honestly, <laughs> it'll sound kind of weird. I've got lots of memorable experiences, but this one sticks out initially. I got into a, a predicament with that machine back there a 
year and a half ago, maybe a year the, ago. The Rapidy, you mean? Yeah, yeah. with the Rapidy sewing mm, yep. the Soul Stitcher. I could not. I could not make this thing. It's it like just, a it's like a bad marriage. Sometimes. <laughs> there, I feel like I feel like we all remember what you're referring to. Yeah, you yeah. know, I just couldn't get I it. Wouldn't sew. Yeah. I could not get it to sew. It would sew a little bit, then it would skip a stitch, then it would break the thread. I just mm -hmm. could not figure out. I was over my head. That was an expensive month. It was yeah. horrible, and yeah. I'm I'm and that's the thing, you know. I'm I'm standing there. There's like 300 pairs of boots around me. Everyone is. I mean, I, I'm like feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders. Sure. Yeah. We need to get these boots done so we can get money, so people can get paid and eat and get fuel for their vehicle and pay their rent and blah, blah. And I'm like, ah, you know? Yeah. And uh, so we called in the man to come and, and help me. So there's like one or two. So this is the reason why we have a now a backup slash replacement for the Rapidy. Um, uh, was mainly because of this incident and there's like because there's like one or two people in the country who know how to repair these rapidies and yeah. they don't live close by yeah and they are also <laughs> definitely getting closer to their retirement and years. The, lo the longer i'm here the more i can talk to him the more i glean and so now i have uh, i have a lot more uh troubleshooting skill so uh but but yeah, we brought him in. Yeah, mm -hmm. we brought him in. He was here for four days, I think. Which is a long time. Which is a long yeah. time, and it's very expensive. Um, and there was like 50 plus pairs of boots backed up, wasn't there? There was, was like more than 300 pairs. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I felt so bad every time I finished a boot and bought I, it over to you. Honestly, <laughs> like, yeah. I, 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 my rack was full, and I started storing boots like around my desk, yeah. because I, I felt so bad every time I, I sent a boot. I don't and get to put discouraged. It on the, I might get angry. But I do not get discouraged. Discouragement is not part of my DNA, man. I was ready to break down and cry. Uh, and that's really saying something, man. Mm -hmm. If my grandkids told me they were mad at me, I might cry. Mm -hmm. But at work, I ain't going to cry. I probably curse. You? But I, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I mean, I was really feeling it, man. And yeah. uh, there were some pep talks. Yep. Yeah. A few pep talks. Well, <laughs> I, I, I gotta say, I mean, and I, I, I'm sure there's correlation here, but some of the most talented people I've seen back there are some of the most critical of themselves, like you included, um, and some others who are like, yeah, I, 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 I did my best. I'm like, this looks amazing. Like, <laughs> you need to give yourself more credit. Well, I think that comes with um, experience. You yeah. know, the more mm -hmm. you do it, the more perfectionist you become. Yeah, yeah I for mean, sure. Yep. You know. Uh, I want, I want, I, when the customer opens that box, yeah, that's yeah. the, that's mm -hmm. the moment, man. Yeah. Surprise, you know? surprise and delight. Yeah. Yep. That's what I want. Uh, Jamin, how about you? Um, maybe talk some of the more, obviously you've, you've made some sacrifices to be here. What mm -hmm. are some of the rewarding aspects of doing what you do? Um, one of the times was actually with Mikey. We were having, this is about a little under a year ago. We had a, a period of time where basically every bootmaker in our department forgot how to make boots. <laughs> but we were still, we, I don't know what happened. There was some like, like collective uh, insomnia or something, but we were getting like a, brain a bunch, <laughs> a bunch of air gaps in the toes. And at the same time, we were also having trouble with the stain in our skies and the glue and all that. And Mikey was not having a good time of it. And I remember walking over, I was like, man, I just feel bad. I was like, I was like, what am I doing wrong? I'm trying my hardest. It's like, I want to know what's going on. And Mikey was like, you're doing great, man. And I just remember it's like, it was, he just reassured me every step along the way. It's like my very first day. I felt like a, I felt like an idiot. It's like, I've never swung a hammer before. I'm bending like, if there's more nails on the ground than there are in a boot. And Mikey was always there. He was just like, Hey man, it's okay. Just, just keep on keeping on. And yeah, he's been a great help and big reason why I'm still here. Well, awesome. Thank you, Jamin. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's a that's a <laughs> thank you, Jamin. That's a very yeah. kind, compliment. It's a very nice thing. I appreciate that. To say, um, I you know I don't know I I think you've answered a lot of these questions as as a kind of just over the course of this conversation. Um, is there anything you guys wanted to wanted to say or or leave leave the audience with um, you know before we sign off? Well, I'll say again, I I, I like to do this every time I get to talk in mm -hmm. front of the camera or on the microphone. 
Thank you, Nick's customers, very much. Absolutely. We really appreciate, I really appreciate you uh, choosing our product. Uh, there's a lot of products out there to choose from. Uh, we like to think that we make some of the best. Um, and uh, again, you know, your, your, your dollar bills help to pay my mortgage and mm -hmm. buy food for my family and take my grandchildren on vacations. And um, I'm super grateful yeah. for our customers and uh, hope we can keep serving you in, long into the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks to everyone because, and the part of it was like, it's really easy to just see the boot and then the ticket and Absolutely. then not realize there's a person about to receive. Yeah. A pair of boots are going to be hopefully open that box and just be absolutely ecstatic. I do like it. to train so. people to to have that attitude. Mm -hmm. I, the first thing I say to them is, I want you to work on this boot like you're making it for you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to understand that we're not just making this boot. We're making this yeah. pair of boots for someone. It's for mm -hmm. a person. It's not just going in that box. Mm -hmm. You know, and those are the people that really matter for us. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was... Lucas and I were at that boot camp um, event in New York, and um, I think we can all get a little like disconnected sometimes, Absolutely. you know, because you've got you know, like there's a screen between you and these people, you know, usually like whether it's on social media or, mm -hmm. or uh, email or whatever. So it, I found it very rewarding to kind of put a face to some of these experiences sure. and, yeah. and and see how grateful everybody was, and it seemed very mutual. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They really appreciate what That's we awesome. do and yeah. um, us putting ourselves out there and being vulnerable and you know like you know meeting that need um so yeah well yeah. said well said absolutely yeah yeah now that you're on slack we have a whole channel dedicated to the great reviews that our customers <laughs> yeah. leave us yeah so you'll be Seriously. able to check those out yeah well because you know like it's my for the customer service team because when you think of customer service you're usually getting yeah problems yeah. so <laughs> and i was like well we should probably also put up all the nice things that yeah. people say yeah, about no, us that's, too. that's awesome yeah. yeah you know all right well thank you guys all right really thank appreciate you. it yeah. Very grateful for you both and for our customers, of course, mm -hmm. and for you, Lucas, and for you, Kelsey. Thank you, Kelsey. Um, thank you, Kelsey. It's been a, it's thank been a great you, ride here. Thank um, you, Shyler. <laughs> thank you to the listeners. Uh, please leave a review. Uh, we love to get those five stars and um, get the word out even more. I hope you liked it. Uh, thanks for hanging with us, and uh, we'll talk to you in, in a few weeks. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. How long would you last in the zombie apocalypse? Oh. If it happened while you were at work. At work? That gives us all the same spot to begin. Oh, we I'm joining the zombies. We're. <laughs> I got about China's. seven days yeah. tops. Because yeah. if I don't have insulin, I'm dead. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh okay. That's, well, that's unfortunate. That's fair. Yeah. I'm going to take some with me, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll have my 45 if I know it's coming. Oh, uh, four, four days, Kelsey. Four days. Four days? Yeah. I'd like precise. to think I'd, I'd do all right. I mean, no, you wouldn't. You'd be dead. In, no way. Why? What? You're too tall. Zombies are slow and, and not. You don't know which kind of zombies. I are guess right that's here. fair. It, it depends on the kind of zombie. If we're talking like World, days, War, World we, War Z or Twenty Eight Days Later, yeah, I'm. If okay. We're talking like Walking Dead zombies. Then yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be totally fine. You just speed walk. World War Z. That I'm screwed. It's yeah, all over. We're, yeah, we're all screwed. Yeah, <laughs> it's over. All right, Jamin, did you answer? Yeah, I said I'm joining the zombies day one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. That's good to know. It just it gives me more information. What do you mean? Who defines? Yeah, so it, well, we no need to, we would need to band together, but everybody's going to yeah. split and go to try and save their families, and that's yeah. what's going to kill us. Yeah, no families allowed. So you got to cut them loose. Make a pact to not find our families. Yeah, leave like, your families behind. <laughs> yeah, they, the unfortunate thing is this building is like one wall is all glass, so it's yeah, like we're, yeah, bad location. We're done. 